this afternoon. Give a big round of applause. My friend, my man, Billy Joel. I'll tell you what I love about best about Billy. He is an international icon. He's known all around the world, but he never has forgotten where he comes from, and he comes from Long Island. Let's give him another round of applause. This is just a big, big day. Uh, and normally, as governor, I would talk about the economic impact and the development, etc. cetera. Uh, Howard Zemsky's going to do that. Uh, but it is major. This is a $1 billion investment uh, that uh, is being made today. It's going to create thousands of jobs. But to me, give a billion dollars a round of applause. <laughs> Also, let's go back. Let's give Jeff Wilpon and the Mets a better round of applause than we did last time. But I'm going to leave the facts to Howard. To me, today is personal. Uh, I grew up in Eastern Queens, just a few miles from here. And I spent a lot of time growing up on Long Island. Uh, I grew up, I'm old, I grew up when Roosevelt Field was just opening and that was the place to go hang out with your friends, Jones Beach in the summers, Nassau Coliseum, that's where you went for a concert, that's where the Nets were playing, Dr. Julius Irving, the first superhero in the ABA with the red, white, and blue ball, I told you I was old. <laughs> and the Islanders, were the Long Island hockey team. That's who the Islanders were. And then they left and they went to the Barclay Center. The Barclay Center is nice, very nice. But the Barclay Center is in Brooklyn. And the Islanders were from Long Island. And when they left and went to Brooklyn, Long Island lost something. It was sad because they were so much part of the identity and the culture and the character of Long Island. And I always felt when the Islanders left, they left a hole in the heart of Long Island. Now, today is a win-win-win. It is a win for the community, big economic development initiative. It's going to utilize this great asset that has been underutilized for years. How many times I drove down the Cross Island Parkway and looked at this beautiful piece of real estate saying, why don't they do something with it? Just underutilized. It is a big win for the fans because uh, it's much easier to get here than to get to the Barclay Center. This will be a, more of a full game experience you can come earlier, there are facilities, you can hang out, you can really enjoy the game. And it is a win for the team. They're going to have their own arena, 18,000 seat arena that is designed for the Islanders, by the Islanders. Uh, and it's going to be all theirs. I think it's going to help the team. I believe attendance is going to increase. Uh, I believe the passion is going to increase. So let's give them a big round of applause. Also, I want you to be very nice when Commissioner Gary Bettman comes up here. I'll tell you why. Uh, first, because he's a nice man, and we're nice to nice people. And we're nice in general, because we're New Yorkers. Uh, but also because we have an ulterior motive. Uh, the commissioner approved this transaction, uh, which we're very grateful for. And uh, we're now appealing to the commissioner to see if we can get some of the home games played at the Nassau Coliseum until this new arena is built. So. So the commissioner is a New Yorker. He's a Queens boy. Once a New Yorker, always a New Yorker. 
I'm sure he's going to do the right thing by New York, Commissioner. I don't want to give you any pressure. I don't want to give you any New York guilt. But let's give the Commissioner another round of applause. <laughs> but it's very simple and it's very clear today. The Islanders are back where they belong. That's what today is all about. It feels right. It feels good. It's another sign that says the island is coming back. Congratulations to all the people that made this possible. It's a great, great day for the team, the fans. It's a great day for Long Island, and it's my pleasure to be part of it. Thank you very much. celebratory day obviously nothing says celebration more than a PowerPoint presentation <laughs> I'm gonna go through this pretty quickly uh, the governor's 10th uh, state of the state proposal Belmont Park I think as you know has a storied history how many of you remember secretariat winning the triple crown here was that not Amazing. The track first opened on May 4th, 1905, and was modeled after the great race courses of Europe. It was dubbed the Test of Champion, and as you know, it's the last and the longest of the Triple Crown races. For years here, its economic potential was untapped, that the governor referenced. The community advocated for developing the empty parking lots that were so underutilized for so long. 36 acres of underutilized lots. We are getting it done. We've been talking about it for a long time in Long Island. In July, as a reminder, we issued a competitive RFP process. We spearheaded to spearhead the transformation of the area, held community listening sessions and briefings for local officials. The goal was six, six components, enhance Belmont Park into a year-round destination, maximize economic benefit for New York, create job opportunity, benefit the surrounding communities, incorporate green and sustainable design practices, and prioritize MWBE contracting. When we launched this process, the governor set the bar high, as is always the case. I've now worked for him for three years. The status quo is never, believe me, sufficient. We received three responses and they were evaluated under the highest standards and criteria. ESD has done RFP processes for many years. This is as thorough and professional as it gets. Arena Partners is the winning proposal. <clears throat> exceeding all expectations. Today, we are talking about a homecoming. Welcome home to the New York Islanders. They'll play in a brand new arena at Belmont Park, Long Island's hockey glory. New York Arena Partners will invest, as the governor indicated, a billion dollars to transform the vacant parking lots into state-of-the-art entertainment complex. The winning proposal features an 18,000-seat year-round arena that will be a permanent home for the Islanders. The project includes premium, full-service hotel as well to attract visitors creates 435,000 square feet of retail, dining, and entertainment space, includes 10,000 square feet for community facility use. The project will provide opportunity for new open space and green space, as was part of our criteria, and feature a pedestrian corridor and bike path connecting the adjacent Elmont community. The plan transforms the parking lots into a hub of 
economic opportunity, activity, and entertainment, creating more than 12,300 construction jobs. More than 3,100 permanent jobs. Importantly, Arena's Partners has committed to the state's nation leading goal of 30% MWBE contracting and 6% disabled veterans. That is impressive. Why is Arena Partners investing a billion dollars? They know we are in the process of transforming Long Island. We are investing $6.6 billion to transform the Long Island Railroad. 9.8 miles from Floral Park to Hicksville and 12.6 miles from Ronkakamo to Farmingdale, the double track and third track expansions, which are so important to the economy of Long Island, as you all know. And we are rebuilding 39 stations across the entire Long Island Railroad. That includes the newly rebuilt Belmont Park station that you're familiar with. And today, Importantly, we are also announcing that the MTA is committed to expanding Long Island Railroad service to Belmont Park with events year round. Across Long Island, we are tapping into the region's unique assets. That's what regional economic development is all about. Tourism is one of the great economic engines on Long Island, as you know, thriving on its stunning beauty. We invested $65 million to return Jones Beach to its former glory as an architectural and recreational masterpiece. Since we began work at Jones Beach in 2014, park attendance increased by 500,000 visitors to 5.9 million last year. Let's hear it for Jones Beach. Some of you may or may not have any spent any time there, senior year of high school, cutting class. But I myself did not. We opened the brand new Long Island Welcome Center, which I think you're all familiar with, and it is amazing. And we are investing in the industry so important to Long Island, including, of course, its vital life sciences industry. We are rebuilding downtowns throughout the island. This is an important part of keeping and attracting young people to the island and making sure we do not continue what was many years of brain drain, walkable, cool downtown areas. Westbury and Hicksville each received $10 million as part of the governor's downtown revitalization initiative. And we will continue this into the following year. And I just want to say to people from Huntington, if your plan brings back hamburger choo-choo, you have a better chance of winning. I'm just saying. The governor told me to say that. And as the governor said, the Islanders are back, and so is Long Island, baby. And it is a great honor and privilege to introduce the Senate Majority Leader, John Flanagan. Howard, I actually don't care if the governor said to talk about hamburger choo-choo. My grandfather, God rest his soul, he used to cajole me into getting up and going to church with him at 7 o'clock in the morning, and the gift after going to church was that we would go to the Hamburger Choo Choo. So that's an iconic place, long gone in the uh, great town of Huntington, but um, <clears throat> Commissioner Zemsky, very smart person, but his most notable attribute, most notable attribute, and I want to put this in context, because he works for the government most important quality he has is a terrific sense of humor. 
We all know that. So uh, the governor mentioned a couple of different things, which I just want to touch on as well. He left out something important about Commissioner Bettman, who happened to spend some of his formative years in Dix Hills. And he said he was there ago long enough that it was a one-lane road in each direction with no traffic lights. No traffic lights. The governor, however, left out something important as well. Now I know why the Welcome Center is in Dix Hills, because he used to go to high school dances back in the day right in that community. But we'll get the rest of the story later. And uh, last but by no means least, in terms of observations, um, I want to say something about Billy Joel. The first concert I ever went to was at Nassau Coliseum. He was the one performing. Now, I know he has this good little gig going on with Madison Square Garden. <laughs> Seems to be working out pretty well for him. But, Governor, use your charm and grace and subtle pressure. Billy, if you could come out and play back here again, that would be beyond cool. <laughs> So the governor mentioned a couple of different things, and I, want, I really want to compliment all of my colleagues in government and both in the public and private sector. Um, I noticed there was a huge round of applause when we were talking about, it was mentioned that there would be 3,100 construction jobs, no, 12,000 construction jobs and 3,100 permanent jobs. Those are good jobs for Long Islanders. That'll be built with union labor here on Long Island, which is good for everybody. And, you know, I look at our partners of government. There are a lot of people here. I want to single out one person in particular. There's always a danger in doing so, but frankly, I don't care. Um, Senator Elaine Phillips has been extraordinarily responsive. Give her a round of applause. Yes, okay, there we go. She's new, she's smart, she's tenacious, she's responsive, she listens to her community, and has worked closely and well with the governor on things like third track, as many of our colleagues have on projects that are important to Long Island. So here, I'm just elated to be here amongst all of my colleagues and with all of you. And I, you know, the governor talked about how Long Island, and Howard mentioned how Long Island is coming back and getting better. Personally, I don't think we ever lost it. I think we're just taking what we have and growing and working in smarter and better ways and making prudent and very wise investments with public tax dollars, your tax dollars your tax dollars that we ask for graciously and hopefully spend wisely at the same time. So I'll close on two notes, or three. First of all, happy, healthy, and safe holidays to everybody. I hope as we move into 2018 that everyone has a banner year. And you know, we are going into election year. So normally, in an off year, the governor lets me sit next to him. But now, he somehow moved to my left and I gotta go back to my right. So, I'm, Governor, I'm just saying. <laughs> just saying. Um, lastly, I wanna mention uh, the Wilpon family. I've had a chance through the course of my tenure in this position to meet a lot of really good people. The Wilpons are special people, really good people. And to me, a bellwether of what people are like, particularly if they've achieved a level of affluence, is they give back, and they give back in very, very big ways. They have ambitious plans for property around City Field, and frankly, they're trying to do the right thing by local communities and certainly here on Long Island. So to Jeff, you and your family, thank you very much. Now, the last thing is, Howard, you mentioned the expansion of the Belmont train station, and John Ledecky actually jumped out of his chair. He was so happy to hear it. And on that very important note, you can tell he is a quintessential cheerleader and a great CEO. Ladies and gentlemen, John Ledecky. Thank you. You ruined the ending, guys. <laughs> thank you, Governor Cuomo. Thank you, thank you, thank you. A round of applause for Governor Cuomo. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your vision. And thank you for being behind this critically important project for Long Island. We are so pleased and proud for you to be here today. On behalf of our arena partnership, which consists of the Islanders, represented here today by Dewey Shea as a co-owner, Charles Wong, who is represented today by his wonderful daughter, Kimberly, and Scott Malkin, 
my lifetime friend, Oakview Group, represented today by Tim Laiwicki, and Sterling Project Development, represented by Jeff Wilpon and Richard Brown. I want to thank all the elected officials who represent the area. We look forward to working with you and to all the great staff that Howard Zemsky runs at ESDC. Thank you. Thank you for selecting the New York Arena Partnership. The island, as the governor has said, is coming back, and that's why the islanders are coming back. And we are investing $1 billion in this state-of-the-art redevelopment at Belmont Park. On a personal note, growing up in Queens, I can't be more excited that the New York Islanders will have a new address here in the 11003 zip code, Elmont, New York. I love this area. I love Queens. My brother David is here today. We lived at a place called 209-39 23rd Avenue. And to all the people who lived there and had to put up with us roller skating every day after school playing street hockey, thank you for the opportunity to do that. And thank you, David, for being such a wonderful brother. For our fans, this day is for you. You've been passionate supporters of the team, both on and off the ice. Today is a huge day for this franchise, and you deserve it more than anyone else. Thank you for your support, and congratulations to you, the great fans of the New York Islanders. To the great community of Elmont, this will be more than an arena. This site will be the home of economic development. As you saw in the slideshow, there will be local businesses, a hotel, retail, and much, much more. We will make every effort to contribute to the further success of Belmont Park and the Elmont community. That is our pledge to you. <laughs> Governor Cuomo has made all of this possible. Please remember that. We are thrilled for the fans. We are thrilled for the community on this monumental day. Thank you to all the parties that worked so hard to get us here. Now, as I'm about to introduce the great commissioner of the National Hockey League, a man whose leadership and vision helped us get us here, I want our fans to show the commissioner, to show the governor, to show Billy Joel. What is it that we do when we put a goal in the net like we've done today? Please. Join me in saying, yes, 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 yes. that's your introduction, Commissioner. Yes, yes, yes. First of all, it's great to be, for me, at a homecoming, having grown up in both Queens and in Dix Hills. Uh, I'm not superstitious, but I do believe there are omens. So we're here today. And I didn't get booed. Thank you, Governor, for that introduction. Uh, secondly, uh, there's no heat in this facility, and it feels cold enough to make ice, so that's symbolic. And third, and most important, this is capacity. We are sold out here today, and that's an omen for what this new arena is going to be like. Yesterday, was the 100th anniversary to the day of the first NHL game being played. And what better way to start the next 100 years than to proceed with this great development at Belmont. So on behalf of the NHL, while we're proud of our history and our legacy for hockey in New York, uh, we think this is a, an exciting beginning of not just a new era, but the next hundred years of NHL hockey. This development, this arena, as you've heard, represents an opportunity for tremendous economic growth. It also is an opportunity for community-oriented development. And while there's a great deal of history at the Nassau Coliseum, it simply outlived its usefulness and is not even in its current condition it is not a viable home 
for the Islanders. So to keep the Islanders healthy, strong, on Long Island, this project was essential. And on behalf of the NHL, I cannot thank everybody enough, starting with the governor and Islanders ownership and Mets ownership and all of the governmental leaders for everything that it took to put this together. So please give all of them a round of applause because we wouldn't be here without them. This will also probably represent the first time in the Islanders history that they've been in what I'll call a world-class facility. This world-class arena will be great for Islander fans. It will be great for concerts. It will be great for tourism. It will be an economic engine for this area. So it's more than just a home for the Islanders. And by the way, with the governor's kind invitation to consider letting the Islanders in the interim play at Nassau Coliseum, I think it's only fitting if I'm thinking about that if Billy Joel thinks about being the opening act for the new arena. So, we are grateful for the leadership of Governor Cuomo and the state for laying the groundwork for what will be an extraordinary project for the community, for the state, most importantly for Long Island. And if you're an Islander fan or an Islander player, you've got a lot to be excited about. So here's to a great future for this project, for Long Island, for Long Island fans, for Islander fans, and for the future of this great community. Now, with that, we have a presentation to make uh, to Governor Cuomo and to Billy Joel. All right, we're going to catch up with that in just a bit. So what you need to know is the Islanders are going to Elmont. There will be a hotel. There will be recreational areas available, restaurants, bike paths through there, connecting to the Elmont neighborhood. Billy Joel, he was invited to be the opening act to all of that. And folks, the Isles will bring full railroad service through there as well. So much more. We're going to have details for you at the bottom of the hour. No. News 12 Long Island's Long Island Naturally is brought to you by Dr. Christopher Calipay. Find the answers for your medical issues with a comprehensive medical nutritional approach. Visit drcalipay.net. Hi, I'm Dr. Christopher Calipay. I'd love to show you some amazing results with our patients that have done stem cell therapy. These are clinical trial protocols that are approved, and you can take a look at all this research on my website. I was sick going on seven years, and the amazing thing about the stem cells, they not only regenerated my liver, they regenerated my immune system. It's like I went back in time seven years. Please go to my website to look at some great clinical medical information, as well as call my office to speak to our staff. Looking for pre-owned SUVs and trucks for winter? Our Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram pre-owned center has it all. The best bargain pre-owned imports are in Smith Haven Mazda Mitsubishi. And for all brands of pre-owned cars and even pre-owned commercial trucks, see us at Smith Haven 112 Auto. Every pre-owned is backed by Smith Haven's reconditioning program. And we're ready to help you to get the credit you deserve. If it's not a Smith Haven deal, it's not a real deal. Don't wait on long shopping lines this holiday season. The fourth annual Unwrap a brand new Toyota event is here only at Smithtown Toyota. Now's the time to get up to 115% over book value for your trade. Or you can go shopping in a new Toyota because we'll pay off your lease up to six months early. Plus, you'll get our exclusive Toyota for Life program. And you can watch those holiday classics on a giant flat screen TV you'll get with your purchase. The Unwrap a new Toyota event is back only at Smithtown Toyota. This holiday season, don't settle for less than the best. Test drive a Mazda today at Smith Haven and get a holiday gift card. No purchase necessary. Come celebrate the season in the premium quality of a Mazda. Get a Smith Haven real deal on a new Mazda CX-5. Just $129 a month. Or a new Mazda CX-9. Only $219 a month. And new Mazda 3 sedans. Just $119 a month. Plus, every Mazda is backed by our 5-star saving plan. If it's not a Smith Haven deal, it's not a real deal. The road to the real news of robbery of Long Island. Ready to go? You have to be on Long Island every day. 
building local connections. Kind of fun if anyone was around last and night. And trust to get all sides of a story. Say, this is the first Being step. there. Once you get on the scene. Tell me what, what happened. For the pivotal moments. See anything on your surveillance video? And being ready to deliver 24 7 Service disruptions eased up. The real news of your town. At this exclusive video. It's on News 12, Long Island. As local as local news gets. The local news station you rely on. Now available on Apple TV with your Optimum subscription. Stay connected to News 12. As local as local news gets. Happening on Long Island, the Islanders are coming home to our island. What we're learning about the big deal that brings them to Belmont. Also, update on the war on gang terror on Long Island. Five alleged MS-13 associates in court. They're accused of plotting to abduct and kill a teenager in Brantwood. And mostly sunny this afternoon and breezy. The beach looks great. What to expect as we inch closer to Christmas weekend. Well, the top of the news, good news. They're coming home. The New York Islanders will once again be just that, Long Islanders. The hockey team has won the bid for the new stadium at Belmont Racetrack in Elmont. Now, the proposal includes an 18,000-seat arena, retail space, a hotel, and what they're calling an innovation center. Also, there will be full Long Island Railroad service. Meanwhile, most importantly, the return of the team feels just right. They were so much part of the identity and the culture and the character of Long Island. It's very simple and it's very clear today. The Islanders are back where they belong. Amen to that. No word how long the complex will take to build or when the Isles will be ready to play there. But Governor Cuomo among those in the room today pushing the league to allow the Islanders to play some of their home games at the Nassau Coliseum. NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman, who used to live in Dick Sills, was pressured to allow that to happen. We'll keep you posted. To Washington now, where Republicans are on the verge of victory in the push for that historic tax reform. The House set to clear a final hurdle today. They will re-vote on the sweeping tax overhaul. There was a glitch that delayed the plan. John Lawrence takes a look at what's in that bill. While